we are moving towards uh, with uh, the technical talk now i would like to invite dr via sineja ma'am professor and head of fpbic nfm sanjavur and pmfmi coordinator i would like quickly introduce ma'am to you the participants i think ma'am is in some meeting so on the behalf of ma'am vijay is going to present the presentation uh, towards you thank you so much myself going to take the section basically this scheme implemented by mofe to formalize the micro food processing sector so coming to the uh, pmmi scheme objectives coming to the objective of the scheme is providing the increased assessing aim of load by exceeding micro food processing enterprises it further aim in supporting fpus enterprises group and cooperative it is also aim at providing the professional technical hand holding support to micro enterprises which is helping formalize the micro food processing sector Uh, then it also focusing on strengthening of the institution at state level and district level research institution in food processing sector next is aim to at developing increase the common service like incubation facility at the district level it also one of the key component of this scheme uh, will be cover the next slide uh, and the scheme engage on formalizing and organized micro enterprises form a producer organization and the sgg is to make investment and upscale that operation thereby it support for the transition of existing flow back enterprises into former uh, into the formal uh, frameworks okay so coming to the major feature of this scheme actually is based on the odop approach here we are talking about homogrop processing and value addition so the total outlay of this scheme uh, 10000 crore for the Period of five years up to the uh, 2025. Here you can see the sharing pattern where the government of India, Mofi, uh, Ministry of Food Processing Industry, directly implement up in this scheme along with the state knowledge agency and the district level partner also is there. So coming to the uh, benefit of the uh, scheme through this scheme, the funding support can be provided for upgradation of existing micro unit as well as new unit in the time of credit linked subsidy of. That is the person uh, with the maximum ceiling uh, amount uh, rupees uh, 10 lakh rupees. In the beneficiary contribution should be the minimum of 10 percent of project cost. This balance being available as a loan from the bank. In addition, seed capital support is also available to the self girl group up to the 40,000 rupees per member head. And there is the state level. Uh, state level marketing and branding support around the 50% of grant for the government organization so they can apply for the common brand under the scheme and the support for establishing uh, incubation center with 100% support for uh, government organization and 50% in case of private, uh, private organization so coming to the uh, next uh, support of the scheme so uh, there is no age limit uh, and education qualification required for applying under this scheme existing unit as well as the new unit we can apply the both odop and the non odop products the enterprises will be eligible for the loan even if the bank loan availed in the any other central or state government scheme also as i said yearly beneficiary contribution should be uh, should be ten uh, percent of the total project cost and working capital support at the rate of forty thousand rupees per uh, SKC member will be given to the SKC for attention and uh, marketing marketing and branding support can be channelized through the state nodal agency mm, so they will be provided putting up the proposal ministry then in the further uh, scholarly process will be followed. So coming to that, uh, how to apply the uh, scheme? Uh, here we can you can see the uh, application of uh, system. On existing unit or new unit, uh, have to apply them through online portal only. So coming to the uh, capacity building, now we can move on the next another important component of the scheme. Uh, main component is the capacity building component. So capacity building component which involved to provide the training all stakeholders of the scheme in the form of the to accept one of the quarter specific training and another is the one entrepreneurship develop uh, entrepreneurship development. 
the product specific training focus on the uh, domain knowledge machineries involved the packaging accept the value addition which respect to the micro enterprises and the marketing and the branding etc product that entrepreneurship development focus on uh, functional aspect of uh, running business involving the various business opportunities deep your preparation which is the most important factor when you are going for any kind of uh, financial support in time of loan subsidies and the skill uh, needed for the business management and also uh, it's covered the regulation registration process required for starting and for business uh the majority of uh, training are conducted on uh, online mode where is the beneficial training uh, beneficial uh, training are conducted in physical mode for better transmission of knowledge and impact of the content so coming to the uh, master level training so uh, basically uh, these are the food subsector or domain on which master training training is conducted in various national level research institute including the niptam tanjavur our institute and niptam country cftr mysore cftr uh, kochi uh, so on that is research institution based on the whatever domain they are taking care so under the scheme we have the nine domain you can see in the screen uh, one is the food and vegetable processing grain processing milk processing fat and oil processing fish and marine processing spice and plantation processing and background and personality man main uh, part foods it is under nine food domain we are uh, mm, is there so uh, coming to the uh, uh, develop training uh, training so once a master training or board training at the state level uh, state level this master training will provide training to the district level official and district level trainers and district resource persons okay so here the uh, here the uh, district uh, resource person are responsible for providing the hand holding support to beneficiaries preparation of dpr online submission of the application and the document needed for the application process so uh, uh, they, uh, they are trained to make the master training about the scheme and the food domain sector in details once they are qualified then they will be eligible to provide the support to the beneficiaries Uh, ultimately the medical students will get training from the district level trainers the district level trainers uh, to go uh, to give uh, training to various categories of beneficiaries like new and existing enterprises who have already applied or those who have just applied under the scheme I already told the district resource person what the uh, role of So uh, now, uh, now you are seeing the district level training and online offline mode. The normally primary processing, secondary processing line, uh, tertiary processing, and the packaging line are storage and the equipment treatment plant also in common incubation facilities. It is created for one or more product like the one ODUP line and the two or three LAP line, which is the non ODUP line. Now coming to the first round of Link by Ministry of Setting of the Common Incubation uh, Facility. Uh, three to five uh, processing line uh, has to be there. Capacity should be uh, one to two ton uh, per day for whole UK and the LAD products. Uh, it including the primary and the secondary uh, tertiary processing and raw protein finishing product and storage and the packaging, which will be cost approximately around two uh, hundred lakhs. And the flooring, uh, flooring minor uh, renovation of existing building, uh, electrical connection, and the other or auxiliary unit, uh, boiler, auto plant, ECP for all municipality provide for funding for around the fifty lakhs. If you want to create a food testing lab in central incubation center, twenty five lakhs separately allotted for that. So, so that um, total cost around the two lakh and seventy five, seventy five. like total totally so coming to the basic uh, equipment uh, these are the basic equipment list which you have to include your food testing lab accelerator like micro enterprises like a hotter oven supply uh, apparatus protein uh, apparatus uh, fiber analyzer proper furnace uh, weighing balance microbial load analyzer uh, the laminar flow chamber including laminar flow chamber auto cleaning filter 
so on. That is the practical meter, pH meter, and uh, thermometer class. But now uh, this uh, basic equipment required for testing lab uh, total around 25 lakhs. So coming to the uh, funding detail of uh, scheme. Uh, and this is the funding detail of the scheme. In, in case the government institution and person PM mapping scheme, uh, uh, we can avail from this form. In case of private agency, 50% of PM mapping is from 50% of private agency. Private agency for a uh, uh, tribunal district. For 60% PM FM scheme, 40% uh, um, private agency. Okay. Okay, Vijay, thank you so much for such a cooperation. Now we are moving towards our next technical talk, uh, which is on FSI licensing and registration for uh, pomegranate microprocessing unit. Now I would like to invite Dr. Ria, uh, Dr. R. Vidya Lakshmi, ma'am, Professor and Head of uh, DFSQT, Niftam Tanjavur. I would quickly introduce ma'am to you. She received her MSc in Agriculture Microbiology from the Tamil Nadu University, Coimbatore, and PhD in Biotechnology from Shastra Tanjava. She joined the institute, this institute as a scientist in 2004, and she is an active member of the Center of Excellence of Green Sciences, contributing to the green research and its quality analysis. She is a life member of the Association of Microbiologists of India. She is an expert in microbiological, uh, microbial safety and quality testing of foods. She has published numerous uh, research papers in peer-reviewed journals, national and international journals. She is a reviewer for the reputed journals in uh, food microbiology and food microprocessing. Her key areas was include like uh, include probiotics, microbial secondary metabolites, and food fermentation. I welcome you, ma'am, and thank you for accepting our invitation. The session is over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, thank you very much, and uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Once again, a very uh, warm afternoon to all of you. I think I'll not take much of the time, like uh, since uh, morning you've been, uh, I think, uh, uh, like enlightened on the uh, pomegranate processing uh, and its uh, value addition and how to pursue a business in marketing of the uh, products. So in case if you want to market your product, uh, uh, since this is under the category of food, our regulation, the Food Safety Standards Authority of India has got certain uh, mandatory requirements to cater to, to become a successful uh, entrepreneur. And there are certain regulatory requirements to be mandatorily met out by a vendor if he wanted to commerce his uh, particular food product. So this session will give you an uh, uh, opening on like what are all the modalities uh, to go about with the registration or the licensing uh, under FSSAI, which is mandatory for the product which may be your pomegranate uh, juice or whatever the beverage or any jam or whatever the value added products under pomegranate you would like to make. Uh, so uh, the FSSA licensing and registration. So this session is on. So before we're moving into the uh, rules and regulations, let me first brief you on what FSSAI is. So the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India is a regulatory body under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So this earlier, it was earlier to this uh, FSSAI being formed. So we had individual orders and we had individual acts. We call them as the Commodities Act. So they may be a Prevention of Food Adulteration Act, which we call it as the PFA Act of uh, 1954. We have uh, uh, Milk and Milk Products Order. We have Edible Oil Products Order. And we have uh, Vegetable Oil Products. Then we have a separate uh, order for um, uh, solvent extracted oil. Like this, commodity-wise orders and acts were there. So later on in 2006, everything was pulled under the one umbrella, which we call it as the Food Safety Standards Act. And the act was enacted in 2006. So this was the act, which was the primary law for regulation of food products in our country. And this act will also be responsible for formulating and for enforcing the food safety standards in India. So later on, what happened, uh, this act slowly regulations were formed in 2011. We call them as the Food Safety and Standards Regulation 2011. And the main aim of FSSA is apart from formulation and enforcement of food safety standards, 
they also regulate the manufacturing storage distribution and import and sale of the food commodity in our country and they issue food licenses to food business operators who are interested in pursuing a business in food and they are responsible for creating information dissemination network among the community and they are also into capacity building and strengthening testing laboratories and uh, uh, training more people in the angle of providing quality and safe food so they are responsible the fssai is responsible for protecting and promoting the public health through regulation and supervision of the food safety so according to the section 311 and 312 of the food safety standard act 2006 every food business operator in the country which means in india is required to be licensed or to possess a registration under the fssai so this is a mandatory requirement so as per this section under this act for every food business operator should register themselves with fssai and obtain a license so this licensing and registration procedure and requirements they are regulated by the regulation which is called as food safety standards licensing and registration of food business regulations 2011 so we are going to see certain uh, points certain important aspects of this regulation and what are the requirements to obtain a registration of the license so first of all like there are two categories we have a fssai registration we have another called as the fssai license so the registration is mandatory for all petty food business operators who are called as petty food business operators means anybody who is pursuing a business in food where the annual turnover does not exceed 12 lakhs. So whomever are having an annual turnover not exceeding 12 lakhs are termed as petty food business operators and it is sufficient that they obtain a registration number from FSSAI to carry over their business. And these petty food business operators, they may be any person or they may be entity who are manufacturing and selling any article of food either by himself or they may be a petty retailer or a hawker or a temporary stall holder. They may be distributing food in religious places in gatherings or anybody. They may be small scale cottage level processing uh, industries or pursuing a tiny business. But the requirement is they should have an annual turnover not exceeding 12 lakhs. And this is how the registration process goes. So some of the mandatory information required is uh, they are they are uh, they have to upload the uh, government issued photo ID like your Aadhaar card, your PAN card. OK, and they should have a reason photograph. And a proof of address of business activity where they are establishing the address of the premises where they are going to uh, have their headquarters or have their business being carried out. So your registration or license is given to the premises where you are declaring to have the business open. Okay, so this is entirely location or premises dependent irrespective of your kind of business irrespective of the uh, products which you are covering under the registration or license. So this is completely online now. So you can just log into this website which is called as FOSCOS website of FSSAI. This website is completely for licensing and registration. So uh, once you log into this website, you can just click on the tab which shows apply for a registration certificate. So just click on the tab so it with a with an email ID or mobile. So a verification OTP will be sent for verification. So once you are logged in, you can apply for new registration by clicking on the respective tab and filling the required details and you can submit the application. So once the application is submitted, you will get a unique application reference number. So for registration, a mandatory fee of rupees 100 is required to be paid. And this application will be filled in form A. Okay. So these are the two uh, things you should remember. So you have to fill form A for registration with a prescribed fees of 100 rupees. And a unique application reference number will be generated. You can, you can keep this number for further references 
So once a reference number is being allotted, your application will be forwarded through the system through a registering authority. So uh, after receipt of the application by the registering authority, he will scrutiny your applications. If he finds every document is clear, no further clarification is required, he may grant a registration number to the food business operator. Or if he feels he wanted to inspect the premises, he may carry over an inspection. Or if necessary, if some there are pending documents or the documents what you have submitted is insufficient, then he may ask for adequacy of the documents. So once you have accomplished all these tasks of adequacy in the application and if successful inspection, if at all required is being carried out by the registration authority, then finally, so everything will be approved and you will be granted a FBO registration number. So it is mandatory that you print this number on your label of the product. So coming to the license, so license is again of two subcategories. We call it as a state FSSA license and a central FSSA license. So it is of two types. So license is generally given to uh, food business operators who are pursuing uh, an annual turnover, who are all having annual turnover of more than 12 lakhs. So registration is for people who are having annual turnover of less than 12 lakhs and license is for people who are having a uh, annual turnover of more than 12 lakhs. So from 12 lakhs to 20 crores, it is under, under the purview of a state food license and 20 crores and above will go under the purview of a central FACC or the food license. So this also depends on the size and nature of the business and uh, in case like uh, uh, your kind of business like you, you may be a manufacturer you may be a processor a transporter importer so depending on all these there are certain categories to be fit into the central license as well and in case if you have uh, uh, your uh, uh, business at uh, more than two more than a state or you have uh, many uh, centers in different locations in different states then you have to declare one of them as your headquarters and uh, it will be covered un under the state license. So after this, like uh, the renewal period uh, for either a registration or a license is up to one to five years. You can obtain uh, the license by the requisite fee up to one to five years. Normally it is one year. If you want to have more number of years, like then you have to pay a higher fees. So uh, you have to apply for renewal at least 30 days prior to its expiry date. And some of the other uh, purview which is coming under the central license may include units which are higher capacity uh, and uh, like 100% export oriented units, all importers of food ingredients and additives, uh, then whomever, whomever are operating in more than two or more state and uh, those who are having outlets at central government agencies like uh, at airports, seaports, railways, etc. So there are certain other criteria like uh, where uh, you have to go for a central license. So documents required for license, this is something similar to your registration only, but uh, here certain additional documents are also mandatorily required. So you have to upload the layout plan of your processing center, the list of directors with complete contact details, list of machineries, equipments to be along with your installed capacity and power requirement, the chemical analysis report, both the bi microbiological as well as the chemical analysis report of the portable water, which is being used as ingredient in your food. And you have to upload uh, the production units photograph and uh, uh, as usual, like the photo ID and proof of possession of the premises is a mandatory requirement and a self-declaration or MOA towards constitution of the firm and nominations of persons by the company. And here you have in the application, you have to uh, select your KOB. KOB means it's kind of business. You have to state whether you are a manufacturer, whether you are a processor or whether you are a transporter, retailer, seller so whatever is your kind of business should be declared uh, before you go into what are all the products and as i told you license should be filled in form b and the requisite fee needs to be paid and you submit the application so this is the prescribed fees actually this is also given in the portal so you can go through it 
and uh, once uh, the similarly like how for registration for license also uh, here mandatorily inspection will be carried out by the registering authority or the licensing authority so after inspecting your premises in in registration it is optional whereas in uh, licensing this is mandatory inspection will definitely be performed by the licensing authority and in case you meet adequacies your you will be granted it will be taken forward and the license will be granted or otherwise you will be given some time frame of around 30 days uh, for uh, correcting the inadequacies okay so once uh, you obtain a license so this is how the structure of the registration or the license will be so i think it's a 14 digit number and uh, you, the first digit will denote why either it is a registration or a license and the following two digits denotes the state code and the following two digits will uh, denote the year of enrollment of business the next three digits which is following denotes the quantity of the enrolling master and the last four six digits are the fbo's permit number this will be your unique permit number but that doesn't mean that you should only print this six digit you should print on the label which is a mandatory requirement along with the symbol of this fssai along with this symbol you have to print it either if it is a license here it will be l if it is a registration it will be a r here fssl or fssr followed by this complete 14 digit number okay this fssa symbol followed with this alpha numeric code should be printed on the label which is a mandatory requirement so this is the uh, website of foscos uh, or uh, the online uh, uh, portal where you can apply for the license you can either go for modification you can renew it so everything can be operated from one single platform so any non-compliance with this provision as laid down under section 55 of the act will attract a penalty or a punishment okay so the fbo the food business operator will be uh, penalized uh, if he is deviating from the law which may include either one or more of these activities like failure to comply with the directions of fssai business without a license if in case you are uh, holding or uh, selling a substandard food or a misbranded food or unsafe food or selling food not of the nature or substance of the quality which is being demanded for any unhygienic or unsanitary uh, manufacturing of food the presence of the extraneous matter in food uh, if you are giving some misleading advertisement or giving false information to the customer any contraventions for which no specific penalty is provided in case if you are processing an adulterant in your manufacturing premises or giving any false information so these are all some of the criteria which the fbo should not adopt or follow in case if they are fined to be uh, in case if they witness uh, they are witnessed for any such activities then there are all chances for cancellation of your uh, license and you will be penalized or even imprisonment is there under for certain activities so coming under the regulation there's a lot of regulations uh, which is coming on and being amended on a day-to-day -day basis so some of the important regulations i've placed here for your uh, reference so the so far whatever we've seen is placed in the licensing and the registration of food business 2011 so coming to your product standard in case if i have a pomegranate juice so what should be the quality and the safety standards of my juice will be spelled out in the food product standards and food additives regulation what are the permissible level of contaminants or their permissible limits actually uh, so you can see the limits of the toxins contaminants residues in the regulation contaminants toxins and residues regulation next you have a packaging regulation the norms which speaks on what are the type of packagings what are all the norms for the packaging material to be used the dimensions the thickness i think there's a following session on this and then you have the labeling and display regulation which uh, gives you the mandatory requirements of a label and uh, the prohibition and restriction of sales as whatever commodity is not covered and the under the standards and the additives act will be covered under nutraceutical health supplements and functional and novel foods 
then you have a regulation for importing you have a regulation for on organic food for alcoholic beverage for, and so on so there are a lot of other regulations as well so uh, our main purview will be to look into the licensing and registration okay it is available in the fssa website so you can just go read it for further clarifications if, if at all anything else is required and to know your product standards you can look into this regulation and uh, to know what are all the other contaminants residual levels to be or not to be present you can look into this okay so i'll just give you a brief of uh, what these product regulations are so coming to this regulation which is on food product standards and food additives so pomegranate being a fruit will be falling under this regulation 2.3 which is a sub regulation under food product standards food additives regulation 2011 so it is coming under 2.3 which is under the fruit and vegetable product category okay so under this this if you see it under 2.3.1 we have thermally processed foods so thermally processed foods are anything uh, like you can say like a canned foods a bottled or uh, aseptically packed okay so products uh, the raw material should be sound it should be mature dehydrated it can be a peeled or unpeeled anything which is described here but only thing your raw material should be of a good quality raw material so as to prevent further spoilage. So this thermally processed food they may contain water fruit juice or they may be added with any uh, dry or liquid nutritive sweeteners spices or condiments okay. So all these should be listed in the ingredient list of the label and uh, you know like uh, the pa packaging medium uh, along with its strength should also be given as a label declaration which is mandatory so coming to the requirement of the quality standard like the drained weight of the fruits should not be less than the weight as given below like in case if it is going to be a liquid pack then it should not be less than 50 percent of the net weight of the contents in case if it is going to be a solid pack then it should not be less than 70 percent of the net weight of the contents so this is a requirement for thermally processed foods then coming to the TSS and the acidity which is expressed as a citric acid. So you can see here there are certain fruits which are specified here and you have other fruit juices apart from those which are specified. Okay. So like you can take a pomegranate. Okay. So other fruit juice of single species which are acidic and not acidic or it, it is not of a single not only pomegranate it is in a mixture of fruits. So you can say not only pomegranate, you have some fruit mixture, mixed, mixed fruit beverage. Okay. So uh, accordingly, you can choose from these four. Your TSS should not be, should have a minimum of 10 percentage and your acidity should be maximum 3.5. In case if your acidity is more than 3.5 or if your total soluble solids does not meet this 10 percent minimum requirement, then your particular product will be out of quality standards. Next, we have uh, ready to serve fruit beverages, which is falling under the category 2.310. Okay. So, this is also similarly like you have to uh, choose uh, uh, wise raw materials, and uh, uh, these should be unfermented. They can be fermentable products as well, like uh, made from the pulp or puree or concentrated juice or pulp of a sound mature food. And you can add uh, whatever like uh, as permitted by the law, some essences, some flavors, salt, sugar, okay, liquid glucose, milk. So any appropriate ingredients as suitable for your product according to your formulation. And whichever it is being processed by heat, okay, we call them as thermally processed fruit beverage. So the product is finally processed by heat and it is appropriately sealed, okay, so as to prevent spoilage. So the requirement is the to total soluble salt, as we saw, it should not be less than 10%. And the fruit juice content apart from lemon for all other beverage should not be less than 10%. So if your fruit juice content is less than 10%, then you cannot call it as a fruit beverage. So it's a very, very important point to be noted. So we have carbonated fruit juices. So here also fruit content uh, for other fruits, not less than 10%. Okay. So your uh, carbonated fruit beverages, the only difference is 
here this is non carbonated and here this is carbonated fruit beverages okay then in case of a fruit based beverage mix or powdered fruit based beverages which is coming under the category 2.3.40 so these are all fruit juice content so after reconstitution by dilution so your fruit content should not be less than 5% so this is a requirement so what are all the additives if at all permissible to be used for the preservation if you see like they are based on the uh, category you can see thermally processed food there are a list of additives which is given in the regulation in the food additive regulation so this is given as an appendix a we call it so there is a list of additives like you have flavoring agents we have coloring agents we have acidifying we have anti caking antioxidants stabilizing emulsifiers so suitable to the uh, product uh, and its application like you can choose say for example so here you can see like a thermally processed i only given one slide of this so there are a few pages on this list of food additives so accordingly you can just go it is available in the public domain you can just uh, go and uh, search for whatever the food additives you would like to have for your product okay so under the prescribed levels you can see 0.3% maximum you can see 2% maximum so a good manufact gmp means good manufacturing which means you have to add it appropriately not too less not too more so you can just as you can see here fruit juices which are aseptically packed okay so soup powders so you can see like um, uh, fruit beverages okay fruit bar so whatever is your uh, food i mean whatever is your product accordingly you can uh, choose the additive and its uh, quantity to be added second you have the microbiological requirements so this is given in the appendix b of the regulation so in microbiological requirements you have thermally processed foods and you have the total plate count so uh, at incubation of 37 degree for 10 days or you can put it under a higher level of temperature elevated temperature of 55 degrees celsius for 7 days anything can be done so the total plate count uh, should not be more than 50 colony forming unit per ml of your juice and there should be no changes in ph when you place it higher elevated temperatures so likewise uh, for different commodities uh, different uh, parameters and their limits have been already established by the law coming to the labeling requirements uh, so thus there are certain you they, you can uh, read on this elaborately on the labeling and display regulation 2019 i've just given you certain important points in two slides about the labeling requirements which is mandatory for fbos to be aware of because it's a mandatory requirement and uh, in the on the label certain mandatory information is being asked by the law to be provided for better awareness of the consumer on the usage of and selection of the commodity so first and foremost the name of the food product what is the name of the food product what are the list of ingredients the list of ingredients should be in a descending order the uh, the higher composition should be given first and next the uh, next composition and likewise it should go on in a descending order okay next you have the nutritional labeling you can see like uh, like you can see here the nutritional labeling what is the protein content what is the energy uh, what is the carbohydrate so etc etc like sector certain mandatory informations if at all any health claim you can say like uh, uh, high in protein so this is low in uh, this is good for diabetic people which means you have to give the gi index so likewise your health claims should be verified with the documents if at all you are asked to pro provide a document for verification you have to have the uh, wherever you take the claim there all documentation support at the back is very very important for your health claim for your nutritional claim and it's mandatory you declare you give a declaration regarding food allergens say sometimes a lactose allergen you have some lactose ingredient in it then it is mandatory that you print it prominently it may contain an allergen it may contain nut it may contain soy okay so the list of allergen if one of your ingredient contains one of the allergen one or more of the allergen it is a requirement that you uh, that you uh, give it as a declaration on the food label next you have the symbol of a vegetarian and a non-vegetarian 
logo so this in case if you have a non vegetarian component into it you have a triangle which is brown in color which is uh, within a square likewise a vegetarian symbol and in case any fortification which means you mandatorily uh, you uh, add a certain uh, fortifications into your product then you can take the claim under fortified food so which uh, f plus symbol on the front of pack labeling is essential along with the slogan you should say state it is fortified and the slogan like sampurna portion swastha jeevan should be present in case if you have an organic food then you can mention it to be organic food so and you can present this uh, symbol uh, with the words jaivik bharat then the list of food additives or the preservatives which is added either in the you can came, give it in their name or you can give it in their international numbering system okay the in numbers or uh, ins numbers in coding also you can give or the e numbers can be given in the list of ingredients and a declaration of warning like in case or uh, like a uh, mother's milk is good for when you have some uh, infant formulas or uh, for example for pan masala like uh, a declaration or the warning label should be there prominently the manufacturing address along with the fssc uh, uh, symbol and the uh, fssc license and the registration number so the manufacturer's address the net quantity batch number date of manufacturing or date of packing along with the best before date or the expiry date and country of origin if at all if you uh, just uh, you uh, origin i mean you imported from uh, another country then you have to give the country of origin and the directions of use and how to store that is also very very important and a stamping in case if irradiation method is being adopted for the particular commodity so these are all some of the essential labeling requirements to be met out and at niftum tanjavur we have a well established uh, food testing laboratory which is nabl accredited uh, for uh, by for the standard on iso iec 1702527 and uh, we are also recognized by fssai and we hold the fssai referral as well as the national reference laboratory status and uh, where we carry out a lot of uh, testing uh, on the commercial food samples being uh, given to us so either uh, before licensing or registration you have to it's a mandatory requirement that you get your water and food tested okay in an accredited laboratory so you can use our services for this testing so this testing brochure is also you can find this uh, in our uh, website as well under uh, food testing you can find this brochure and you can avail the services of testing for your food commodity whenever you are going for a registration or a license or for the nutritional labeling also we provide you can see here we have the nutritional analysis we have certain parameters actually uh, which are the mandatory requirements to be tested so for this nutritional analysis you can avail the uh, testing services also so uh, so our uh, laboratory is catering to such uh, services as well and uh, you can use our testing services uh, and you can give your samples tested our laboratory uh, secondly we are also into training in case if you uh, wanted to you have a qc lab or you wanted a qc lab to be set up in your premises so we do that guiding and consultancy as well in establishing of a food testing laboratory and uh, we are also providing training we are under the fssai we are a recognized fostac training partner and it is a mandatory requirement that your staff who are into processing and handling of food are have undergone this fostac training program conducted by empaneled training partners so uh, we are an empanel training partner under fostac for fssai so you can also attend our fostac training programs on uh, basic manufacturing advanced manufacturing you can just keep looking into the fostac website uh, for and you can attend the training programs that is also a mandatory requirement so when you are having a business in food okay so you can avail our services you can write to our director at uh, niftum tanjavur and you can email to the email ids provided here for any queries regarding this thank you so much uh, for this opportunity and the session is open for discussion so i am here to answer your questions thank you so much ma'am for such a wonderful presentation and the session also and it's very informative for the industry people who are want to start a company or a startup for the pomegranate 
and uh, i think you already answered all the questions in between right now i think so they are asking for the trainings also so you already cleared the uh, question thank you so much ma'am uh, thank you thank you so much thank you thank you so much now we are moving to the words the next technical talk which is on packaging solution for pomegranate based products for this session we have with us dr s ananda kumar associate professor and head in charge of df psg nifty sanjawar i would quickly introduce her to you prior joining to nifty sanjawar he has served as an assistant professor in the department of marine technology college of marine science and technology in the north uh, north east africa he has more than 15 years of experience in teaching and research also specializing in designing food processing equipment and developing of sustainable food packaging materials he has published over 30 papers in national and international journals and he has developed many processing equipment technologies like continuous stripe counter current form mat dryer solar packed uh, bed dryer rotatory machines fish cooking kettle mobile processing units and many more i welcome you sir and thank you for accepting our invitation the session is over to you sir very good afternoon to one and all uh... And this session mainly on uh, packaging solutions for pomegranate and its product so we have three kinds of uh, uh, category one is for example if you take the uh, the whole fruit uh, the pomegranate so there what kind of packaging standards we have to follow if you do something uh, processing for example only you are packing the areas so in such a case what kind of packaging material or packaging uh, uh, standards which will be followed in the packing of uh, pomegranate variety and uh, apart from that we have this pomegranate juice and uh, pomegranate powders so when we have this kind of uh, the processed food items like uh, uh, ready to uh, eat food items or ultra processed food items there are what kind of packaging standards we will follow so those things we will see in this particular session when we say the term packaging particularly for the, the, the fruits and vegetables especially for the pomegranate so any physical material which we will unwrap or covering the valuable commodity and it is protecting the product until it reaches the consumer so that action is to be a packaging and whenever you select the packaging material it should be a cost affordable Uh, we should not be uh, over burden to the the producers and uh, the marketing people as well as the consumers so in such a case that packaging material it should be match with your product at the same time it should protect your uh, product during the transportation and and even during the storage period so these are the some functions of the packaging material so when we talk about this uh, agriculture commodity and even if you see that uh, pomegranate that each uh, product will have different kinds of uh, storage temperature will need different kinds of relativity and will need different kinds of packaging materials so in such a case uh, mainly the selection of the packaging material will solve the problem during the transportation because when we take the pomegranate so if the pomegranate is overloaded uh, in a particular container always uh, you are uh, you are your road conditions uh, for particularly if you see the road condition in the villages so there will be more ups and downs will be there so this type of uh, the, the the changes will give more mechanical stress to the commodity so in such a case Uh, your packaging material it should have some cushioning effect so that this type of uh, the mechanical uh, injuries that can be avoided moreover all this commodity will have the respiration characteristics so it will consume the oxygen release the carbon dioxide so in such a case uh, you should not uh, avoid giving the oxygen some people they will say uh, completely removal of the oxygen will extend the shelf life of the commodity it should not be that because that will give other kinds of physiological stress to the commodity so in such a case uh, you have to keep the product in a proper ventilation box so that uh, that will consume required amount of oxygen it will stay for longer so these are the some of the uh, importance when we go for selection of the packaging material if you take the main causes for the deterioration particularly in the pomegranate one is that uh, high rate of respiration for example 
uh, when we take the uh, commodity, uh, we are classifying that vegetables or foods uh, like uh, uh, small uh, respiring commodity, medium respiring commodity, and the high respiring commodity. Particularly, if you take the fruits and vegetables, uh, if the, the environmental condition, if it is giving some stresses, otherwise if this uh, nearest to the ripening uh, ripening stages, uh, it is almost past the ripening stage. So in such a case, what will happen? The, the commodity respiration rate will be differ with the other maturity stages. So in such a case, always you have to check the respiration rate of that particular commodity. So based on that, you have to adjust that environmental condition so that your product which will not be spoiled uh, quickly. And another thing, ethylene production, because once the ripening started, so that plant hormone, ethylene gases will be produced. Once the ethylene gases in the surrounding area, if it is more, then that will trigger the ripening process in the other uh, unripened commodity. So the ripening will be faster in, uh, uh, in, uh, in other stored commodity. So in such a case, uh, you should maintain the ethylene gas level inside the cold storage structures or it's inside the, the packaging system so that your fruits will not uh, ripen very quickly you can extend the life of the commodity external damage during the, the transport or it's a spot rot of the pomegranate even sometimes you can see uh, over the pomegranate you can see that black black uh, dots on it either it can be due to the uh, what we can say that sunburn or it can be due to the chilling injury or due to the carbon, higher level of carbon dioxide where it has been removed. So there are many reasons are there uh, for making these black spots over that uh, surface. So that has to be addressed or controlled. And weight loss, so this weight loss will be there wherever the relative humidity uh, if it is not properly maintained. For example, above 80, 85 percentage of the relative humidity it has to be maintained for keeping this pomegranate in the cold storage. Whenever there is a differences in the uh, relative humidity, so the dryness will be occurring, so automatically the moisture from the product which will be transferred to the atmosphere, so you get the weight loss in the pomegranate. Uh, similarly, the chilling injury, so normally the pomegranate it can be recommended to store at 7 degrees centigrade. So when you are storing that pomegranate at lower temperature like 2 degree or 3 degree centigrade, so that will cause a chilling injury in your pomegranate. So these things also you, you must consider to avoid this type of deterioration. Particularly when you see the uh, pomegranate, once it is harvested, it will come to the pack house. So either the pack house, it can be a conventional method or it will, be, uh, it will have some specific uh, packing system. So, uh, in such a case, the, the equipment which will be used in the pack house, it will be different, uh, depend upon the commodity what you are going to uh, pack it. And uh, similarly, either you are going to export that commodity for some foreign country or you, are, you want to sell the commodity in the Indian local market. So, based on that also, that grading system or uh, the packing system, everything should be ready. If you see the, the key operation, major things which will be taking place in the uh, pack house, particularly you can see the receiving uh, that they will have the quality inspector, they will check the maturity stages of the uh, commodity. Sometimes if it is having a damages that can be discarded, or we say, if you see some other commodity, for fruits and vegetables, they will do the trimming, sorting and grading. Okay, So here that the sorting and grading, you can see the pomegranate either the grader you can see based on the size graders are available on weight basis the grading system will be there uh, even you can see the the, the the diameter okay based on the diameter okay and as well as the flower uh, uh, what we can say with by seeing measuring those things that uh, grading of that pomegranate will be taking place and apart from that that the color sorter okay based on that color image of that pomegranate okay so that also which can be uh, measured uh, considerations, for, particularly if you go for exporting of this pomegranate. So there are different kinds of color sorters or uh, the graders are available. So based on that, you can uh, uh, grade or sort the commodity. Otherwise, in some cases, the, the delactizing. Okay, some when you do the trimming or something, some liquids will be coming out from the trimming surfaces that has to be removed. That is called a delaxing. So and uh, apart from that, we have the waxing. For example. Uh, for the pomegranate, we are giving that uh, wax coating to avoid the weight loss and as well as to make shininess. 
uh, of the commodity. So we are having this uh, uh, wax, uh, wax coating process. And uh, apart from that, in the pack house, they will have a separate uh, uh, ripening chamber or they will have the cold storage systems. So according to the stacking arrangement, so that the pomegranate can, can be stored in the pack house. Mainly, if you see the equipments which will be used, there will be a weighing scale, washers, starting table sizes, okay, dipping tanks, vacuum machine, blowers, okay, that the air dryers, conveyors, all these things are uh, major requirements of the pack house. Uh, apart from that, if you consider that a cold storage uh, for handling and storing of the pomegranate in your corrugated boxes or plastic crate, so there you can use that pellets or crates or four clips. All these things, temperature controller, okay, color meters, all these things are um, uh, mandatory for running that back house. When we talk about that uh, packaging requirements, for example, uh, this pomegranate, uh, uh, either it can be a, a whole food we are going to pack it, otherwise sometimes you will go for a processed food items from the pomegranate. So in such a case, uh, whenever you select the packaging material, so this packaging material you should protect your uh, product and that should not have any uh, cross contamination with your product for sometimes uh, it can be, it should not have any migration effect. And whenever you throw the packaging material that should not create any environmental issue. And also if you see the cost of the packaging material, it should not be in the higher end. Okay, and the packaging material should be readily available. And it should be supporting the machinability or it should be uh, support the pack house for continuous packing operations. Okay, so these are all the things, uh, minimum requirement when you go for selecting the packaging material. In general, that types of packaging, we have the primary, secondary and the packaging material. So that primary will have the direct, primary packaging material will have the direct contact with the food items. Secondary and the tertiary packaging materials, mainly it is used for handling or bulk transport of the commodity from one district to another district or one state to another state, which will be varying. So mainly when we go for the secondary and uh, transit packaging, so that time the dimension of the packaging material, the strength of the packaging material will be varying depending upon the commodity, what you are going to uh, pack it. Here when we see first the bulk packaging of that uh, uh, pomegranate, so here uh, we have two things. One is uh, bulk packaging. So it can be varied from some 15 kg to 25 kg uh, boxes. It will be varied. Otherwise, it can be uh, packed as per the requirement of the consumers. For example, uh, 1 kg or 2 kg packets or 5 kg packets according to the consumer uh, carrying capacity. So that will be varied. So in such a case, uh, these two things are mainly uh, which will be done uh, according to the consumer demand, according to the retail market or marketing demand which can be segregated in the pack house. So in such a case, uh, the, the predominant size for the uh, bulk packaging which will be varying from uh, 15 to 25 kg. Otherwise, if you see that a pallet container, for example, in a pack house, uh, they will have that uh, stacking arrangement. So in such a case, if you see the pallet stacking arrangement, so each pallet which can hold the capacity, for example, 200 to 500 kg of this pomegranate. So uh, that will be, uh, uh, depends upon the capacity, it can be varying in a small size or in the uh, bigger scale. Uh, in general, for example, for bulk packaging, we are using different kinds of packaging material uh, that is varying with a different load capacity also. So in general, we are using that uh, net bag, PP worn bags, we are using it for packing of that uh, uh, pomegranate. Otherwise, it can be used with rigid containers, it can be a wooden pellets or it can be a plastic crates. Uh, otherwise, you can see that the corrugated fiber gold boxes, CMD boxes, that is also used for packing of uh, this pomegranate. If you take that uh, the PP woven sacks, okay, that uh, polypropylene woven sacks material, so normally it is a flexible material and it has the ventilations and this type of product which can be pulled uh, around some 15 kg of that pomegranate in a uh, PP woven sacks and it can be used for uh, mainly in the, uh, the, 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 the transportations, particularly in the shorter distant, uh, distances. And this type of bag, sometimes if it is overloaded, then that will give the, the, the stress to the commodity, which will be loaded in the bottom. And also, 
sometimes the sharp edges in the commodity that can also will make the puncture uh, damages to the, the neighboring pomegranate. So in such a case, uh, for a shorter distance, you can use this, uh, uh, what we can say, PP wound sacks. And it can be stored in the vertical positions or it can be in the lay down position, it can be transported. Another thing, wooden boxes. So normally the wooden boxes, you can say, it can be a sustainable packaging material. So environmental friendly packaging materials and it should have a proper ventilation also. And here also they have uh, a very good strength uh, which can have, uh, you can go for uh, uh, stacking. Uh, in general, normally they will go for 21 pellets. Uh, they can, uh, 21 boxes, right? they can keep it in one stack. And uh, also uh, the strength of the boxes, which can be depend upon the dimensions and the thickness of the wood, what you are taking. So based on that, the strength of the boxes also which will be varying. Apart from that, we are using that corrugated fiber board boxes. Uh, uh, it is varying with uh, uh, the dimension and the shapes. Uh, uh, if you see, there may be a single wall, double wall, triple wall, uh, corrugated filter boxes are available. For the pomegranate packaging, normally we have that beer case type of uh, corrugated filtered box, we are using it, otherwise we are using uh, that regular slotted box, RSC box, we are using it. Sometimes uh, these uh, boxes will have uh, the liner uh, to avoid the moisture absorption and mainly when we use this corrugated filtered box, we should have the uh, ventilation, the hole should be there. Uh, for example, if you want to make the export standard of the uh, corrugated box, uh, there is a PIDA guidance, okay, there is an export standard guidelines are there, particularly for selecting that corrugated filter box, so that standard we have to follow when we go for export purpose. Mainly whenever you select that corrugated filter box, uh, you have to measure the, the strength of the boxes, for example, you can see the style of the boxes, type of fruits, number of fruits, okay, the direction of the fruits the GSM of the packaging material, busting strength of the packaging material, okay, the top index, moisture absorption, okay, the types of additives you are using in the corner edges. Sometimes they will use the ancillary material, tables, they will use, some people they will use the, the additive material in the corners for the joint. So these are all the things you have to check when we go for uh, selecting the corrugated boxes for your packing up that whole pomegranate food. So the APIDA standards, particularly if you see the APIDA standards for packaging of uh, this pomegranate in corrugated fiber board boxes, they are given standard for two categories. One is that 3.5 kg of uh, pomegranate it can be packed in a corrugated boxes, or with that 5 kg of pomegranate it will be packed in a corrugated fiber board boxes. So in such a case, these are all the parameters, the minimum specification they have given bar. for example, that is style of the box, number of price, the type of proofs, what you are going to use, okay, the direction of the proofs, okay, grammage, what is the GSM of that uh, packaging material, busting strength, okay, at what pressure that uh, paper material which can bust or tear, so the busting strength, okay, and the number of pieces for boxes, okay, manufacturer joint either it can be a brute or it can be done by the one stable, okay, that, uh, that is the thing, and the compression strength of the boxes, moisture absorption, number of ventilation, if you have a particular box dimension, the, the regular slotted case, for example, if you take that corrugated fiber board box, having the dimension 380 by 270 by 125 mm, so that uh, the number of ventilation should be number of ventilation 16. So there may be a six sides, so one will be in the bottom and the top, so that the two sides should be uh, 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 not taken. So other things, if you see the side, so in such a case, so you have to give that uh, 16 uh, number of holes in the side so that when you keep the product in the cold storage. So through the ventilation that uh, cold air it can enter so that can remove the feed heat or it that can remove the respiration uh, due to the respiration what is the heat generated inside the boxes. So everything it can be removed. So these are the things which has been uh, followed when we go for export standard. Even you can see that edge crust, that uh, what we can say that corner test, they will do it. The crushing strength, normally that FCT, ECT, RCT, they will connect. So here that ECT value should be uh, 34 kg force, it should be there. So these are the, the minimum uh, requirement, it is mandatory, particularly when we go for 
exporting your pomegranate uh, as per the Africa standard, you have to follow these type of things in the corrugated boxes. And apart from that, uh, the reinforcement material, for example, uh, you have that uh, corrugated boxes, it is completely covered and you are using this ancillary material. For example, you are using that cellophane tape for the closures. For the cellophane tape also, they give on the standard, it should be bioxidly oriented polypropylene or PVC based cellophane tape it can be there. And the thickness, it should be minimum 20 micron and the width of the, the, the tape will be uh, 50 mm it should be there and what is the glue you are using it should be as per the highest standard that 36 ounces should fill fill. So these are all the things uh, when you select the cellophane tape for uh, taping the boxes. And another thing for reinforcement, uh, reinforcement for increasing the, the strength to avoid the damages, spillages. So this reinforcement material we are using it, it is made by the polypropylene and with of that uh, strip will be 12 mm thickness 0.05 mm and the breaking load 80 kg for 12 mm weight. So if you have the, for example, you give the samples to any tensile strength instrument, they will check it out what is the, the load carrying capacity, breaking load. So these are all the things which will be rec uh, recommended, which has to be followed for uh, the, the ancillary material, particularly the reinforcement material and the tapes. And apart from that, we have that cushioning material, okay, for example, sometimes you can see that the imported commodity, Afghanistan, pomegranate, or uh, uh, some other country, pomegranate, you can see, they will have the cushioning uh, materials, right? normally it is made by that uh, expanded polishing foam material, otherwise nowadays you can see that the paper pulp board, okay, so all that paper pulp board, uh, they have that uh, pomegranate, otherwise uh, they have that plastic crates, okay, that uh, plastic uh, foam there, uh, plastic, uh, what we can say, that blister packed material. So in such a case that individual pomegranate can be uh, kept in the particular packet, so that the, uh, the load uh, will not be transferred to the, the next layer. So that can uh, avoid that mechanical damages during transportation uh, and handling. And the plastic crates, we are using it. So normally the plastic crates are made by identity polyethylene or polypropylene. So nowadays, uh, these plastic crates uh, are available in foldable structure also. So that will occupy lesser uh, lesser space in the back house. Okay? For example, if it's a rigid container, the empty crates itself will occupy a larger area. But if it is in a foldable crate, so that time uh, it can be, uh, when it is not in a usable state, so you can fold it and keep it in the uh, cold storage area where it will occupy lesser space. So this uh, capacity also will be varying. For example, uh, it is available 5 kg, holding capacity 15 kg, 10 kg, 15 kg, also it can be having 25 kg, a bigger capacity also it is available. So according to that, the thickness and the strength which will be varying. So the plastic crates we are using it for the, the packing of, uh, uh, for handling purpose of uh, this pomegranate. Another thing that uh, palletizing, okay. Palletizing, it is very, very uh, important component, particularly when you go for storing the pomegranate in the cold storage system. Because over this uh, pellets, either it can be a wooden pellets or plastic based pellets, so over that they will keep the pomegranate uh, the boxes, okay. So uh, that can be easy for uh, what we can say. By using the four clip, you can easily uh, transport from uh, one cooldown to, uh, uh, we can say, the, again, pack house for uh, uh, refilling or making in the uh, boxes into the consumer packet that you can change it. So in such a case, it can be kept over the uh, or plastic pellet and moreover when we keep it in the cold storage normally the corrugated boxes when we ask the direct contact with the, the flow system so automatically it will absorb that moisture so uh, that will cause damages to the, the bottom boxes that will uh, reduce the strength of the boxes and also from that any uh, microbial contaminations or damages which can be occurred so in such a case to avoid those things so that wooden pellets or crates are used in the cold storage system uh, and another thing you can use that is net bags. Okay, so this net bags for particularly uh, you, you want to pack some 2 kg of uh, pomegranate. Okay, then they can use this uh, what we can say that an island bags, uh, net bags they can use it. It can be a stretchable, uh, stretchable 
and also there are some net backs it can be in a particular uh, shape so uh, particular uh, sizes so based on that capacity you can fill this product okay it can be used for uh, pomegranate other commodity uh, onion we are packing garlic we are packing okay so this type of products also it can be packed in the uh, net packing system another thing we have that a tray packing system okay so this tray packing system they will call it as a uh, type of packaging or they will call it as a tray packing system so in such a case that pomegranates it can be packed in a tray and it can be um, covered uh, with a, a view of PP film by using the shrink wrapping or tea wrapping machine so this type of packing material uh, methods are also available particularly this will comes under the consumer package for a minimum capacity 1 kg or uh, 2 kg or, or 3 kg so this type of things which will comes under the consumer package another thing we are going uh, for uh, coating of the pomegranate so in such a case that coating will have the advantages for example uh, if you take uh, the appearance of the product will be uh, increased okay which will reduce the weight loss uh, so that will act as a active packaging so that will not uh, allow the commodity to be directly exposed to the uh, the dry situation so that uh, the moisture retention will be there okay and also you can see the uh, glossiness okay the, the glossiness shininess which will attract the consumers uh, consumers even even that insides are house fly so these are all the things that will not create any uh, any uh, damages over the uh, commodity when which is stored in the the, the sense outlet and also which will reduce the respiration so creating this coating material over the commodity will also be, which will control the respiration so because of that uh, shelf life also which can be uh, increased and that will maintain the freshness of the commodity so normally that uh, uh, coating it can be done by brushing method because there are different kinds of uh, coating methods are there in either it can be a dipping method or spraying method or brushing method so mainly they are using uh, for the pomegranate brushing method of that coating there are different kinds of uh, coating materials are available either it can be organic based or paraffin wax wax uh, wax coating lipid lipid based coating materials are there and another kinds of packaging we can have this controlled atmosphere packaging so when we have this controlled atmosphere packaging the temperature the gas uh, level in the uh, cold storage system everything it has to be monitored and it has to be controlled so uh, until until it is uh, it is uh, coming out from the cold storage or uh, coming out from the one pair atmosphere storage structure so all the the, the biotic and uh, uh, what we can say the, the air biotic factors everything it will be controlled okay for example even you can have this uh, uh, ethylene control system for example if there is more ethylene that ethylene gas has to be there so that my gas level inside the structure should be maintained the temperature level it has to be maintained so because of these things the the pomegranate shelf life it can be increased for two months or three months in the particular cold storage systems otherwise we have that modified atmosphere packaging system so uh, whenever you are changing the gas level around the commodity uh, when compared to our normal atmosphere like 21 percentage oxygen 0.03 percentage carbon dioxide and 78 percent nitrogen so whenever you change this gas composition level which will be called modified atmosphere packaging so there are many different gas composition levels they are using it for the pomegranate because the selection of that gas level it is depending on the maturity level or the or the or, or the permeability of that packaging materials what you are having and what kind of that storage conditions environment you are going to store in so all these factors which will play a major role in the selection of that gas composition level so here when we see that uh, consumer packaging so here it should be varying half kg to 2 kg for example you can have the product for example that pomegranate powder they are having or the pomegranate areas they are having it or they are having the whole pomegranate in a, in a normal uh, packing conditions for example one kg two kg so all these things which will be comes under the consumer uh, uh, packaging systems in this case uh, the technology which will be used for making such a consumer packaging one is called vacuum packaging 
So here that aerials will be removed from the pomegranate fruit and it should be packed in a flexible packaging material, particularly you can see this uh, uh, polyamide nylon based packaging materials or polyethylene based packaging materials are used for vacuum packaging. So these are all the machines which is used for uh, creation of the vacuum in the packaging material. And after vacuum packaging, you have to store the commodity in the cold storage systems because after vacuum packaging, you can't, whenever you do the modified atmosphere packaging, after modified atmosphere packaging, the product should be packed in a cold storage condition. So normally, as I told you, that 7 degrees centigrade will be recommended for packing of uh, for uh, the pomegranate material. And apart from that, we have this modified atmosphere packaging, as I told you, controlling the gas level. So here you can see uh, whenever you are selecting some packaging material oriented polypropylene or polypropylene uh, biaxi oriented polypropylene, okay, over gas, the acetyl acetate packaging material. So based on that the packaging material barrier properties and the application of that uh, water to water level also which will be very. And here also you can see the temperature level that is also varying for this type of area. So in such a case, the shelf life also will be depending 10 days, 15 days or 14 days it will be depending on the gas level, what you are selecting, types of packaging material, what you are selecting. So all these things which will be uh, considered. Mainly, for example, if you have that whole food, so the recommendation that minimum 4 percentage of oxygen, it should be there. The carbon dioxide level, which will be varying from 5 to uh, 10 percentage. So that is for used for sometimes that the whole food can be going for the uh, MAP. And similarly, if you see that uh, uh, what we can say the, the area. Uh, so sometimes they may use that LDP pouch with the printable cover. Cover. When we say that printable cover, so then they, have, they may have that uh, micro filtration. So through that, uh, the higher level of gas transmission can be controlled. So the record level only which will be transmitted, so that that aerial uh, life can be extended for longer period. We have another kinds that punda type of. Uh, Packaging material we are using it. This is called the thermoformed plastic containers. Okay, so that thermoformed plastic containers with the proper uh, hermetic sealing conditions, you can have these uh, aerials. And similarly, after that, again you have to keep the product in the cold storage systems. Our shrink wrapping we are using. For example, uh, whenever you have this type of uh, uh, type of closures, the edges will have that to open. So in such a case, this type of boxes again it can be covered with the shrink wrapping machine. So that uh, it, it can be uh, hermetically uh, packed, so that uh, the, what we can say that the juice losses or the gas uh, uh, diffusions that can be controlled, so that that will support you to extend the life of the commodity. Then we have the packaging uh, methods or solutions for the juice. Actually, sir, we have very less time. So okay. Okay. So the glass bottles, PET bottles. And metal containers and as well as the tetra packing methods are used for packing of the juices. And these are all the filling machines we are using. Either it can be a, a vacuum filling method, okay, it can be hand operated, pedal operated, okay, otherwise we have that a continuous form fill sealing machines. And as you can see that a paper boat, that company, they will fill the, the spout packing machines are there, okay. So they will uh, first collect uh, the nitrogen gas once the pouch is open, then they can fill the juices then hermetically it can be sealed. So spout packing will be there. And different kinds of closures they are using. For example, it can be a um, metal closure or it can be a plastic closure. So normally they, they leave that roll on uh, flare or OPP uh, closures for uh, this type of pet bottle closures. And another thing, we have this uh, tetra packing or aseptic packaging. So when we have the tetra packaging, minimum uh, six to eight layers will be that. And uh, this juice, product which will be packed in aseptic conditions, particularly uh, the packing conditions will be free from microorganisms. So that will be supporting to extend the life of the commodity. Then there are different kinds of labeling we have, that is blue on labels, self adhesive labels or in more labels. So according to the product, whether it can be a Puna type of closures or boxes, you can use this type of self adhesive or you can use that blue on labels for this, uh, uh, what we can say, net bags. Or if you are selling some juices, then you can use that uh, in mold labels or sleeve labels, you can use it. Similarly, there are different labeling equipments are there for uh, according to the dimension of that uh, packaging material. Either it can be flat glass labels or round bottle labels they are using.
then they are using that RFID tags or barcoding systems that will be used for uh, giving more information about the product or to understand the traceability of the product. They are using these RFID barcoding systems. And when we want to sell the product, particularly you, you can see sometimes pomegranate chocolate it is available, pomegranate powders are there, pomegranate juice materials are there. So whenever you sell the product in the market, you have to satisfy the FSSA labeling requirement. So there are 13 parameters it has been mandatory to print those content in the uh, packed product whenever you sell the product in the market. With this, I um, conclude. So the packaging uh, for the pomegranate uh, and pomegranate based product, so that will be depending upon the nature of the product and nature of the processing conditions and the type of uh, uh, storage condition and the shelf life of the commodity. What is your expected shelf life? So based on that, the selection of the packaging material and uh, uh, what we can say in the, the size, everything which will be depending on your uh, requirement. And uh, moreover, whenever you select the packaging material, you think of the cost of the packaging material as well as that you will not create any environmental issue. And almost we go for that recycling, reusable packaging material. So that will minimize the carbon footprint in the packaging industries. So with this, I thank the organizer and the director for giving this opportunity to share some of the, the important things currently used in the packaging of uh, this pomegranate. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for giving you valuable time in this uh, presentation and session. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we will start for the th uh, next technical session, which is on entrepreneurs' experience sharing. So on uh, this, I would like to invite Dr. Ms. K. N. Rao, uh, Mr. K. N. Rao, the technical director, Sam Agritech Limited, Hyderabad. I would like quickly introduce sir to you. He is an agriculture graduate, has been working with the Sam Agritech Group as a technical director for the last 23 years. His experience encompasses growing horticulture crops, advising farmers on farm practices, various farm certifications, fruits and vegetable processing, wine making, quality and social certification. He helped the farmers for the first European Global Gap, now called Global Gap and Texco Nurtured Choice certification in India in 2022, oh, sorry, in 2002. Uh, he is presently working with a few extraction and cosmetical companies on adding value to pomegranate processing, process waste. The Sam Agritech Group is a first company in India to start exporting fresh pomegranate areas, fresh cut coconut, dried pomegranate areas, and fresh pigs to Europe, UK, and other destinations, and the first company to pomegranate to USA. I welcome you, sir, to, uh, in this, and thank you for accepting our invitation. The session is over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. So, Samagri is, uh, we are the first company in India to start uh, the pomegranate areas export from uh, India. So, I will make the presentation brief and then at the end I have got a small video about our activity. And uh, last 2-3 minutes or 5 minutes you can have for a question and answer things. Okay. So, one minute. Yeah. So, 1996 the company started but we started our pomegranate activity in 2006. So 2007, we started our first export. We started with uh, 100 kilos uh, uh, consignment, first consignment. And uh, presently, we are doing about 6 to 7 tons a day. And these are our milestones. So 2014, uh, our second facility started in uh, near Tirupati. Uh, and uh, next 2019, where our third facility in Nashik. Now we have one more facility ready. Uh, it is again near Bangalore. So most of our facilities are near airports because all the material is airlifted. Okay, and this is our team. GVK Naidu is the funding uh, director. He is the managing director. And Mr. Pratham, <coughs> he is a CEO. And David Levin is our marketing director. He lives in Israel. And uh, I am the technical director. And Dr. Chengapa is our... Uh, one of our director and chairman. So this is our team. And uh, we have around 2,000 acres of plantations. And we are adding more acreages. Most of these plantations are uh, GAP certified. And they are under contract supply to us. And then you know, we process about 2,000 plus metric tons. And it is growing. Now we got more than four facilities with 1,65,000 square feet area. 
and uh, we cover more than 25 countries most of, al almost 99% of product is exported we don't sell anything locally and we got uh, multi location high care facilities we got like, like i said we got four different facilities and uh, every place has its own laboratory and we got an in house r and d lab in nashik and we have various global accreditations these accreditations i'll come in detail in the later uh, slide now these are the important considerations uh, like our experiences what all we learned uh, during our 14 15 years of journey in pomegranate seeds <clears throat> few important things when you want to explore uh, either indian market or markets abroad first and foremost important consideration is your traceability traceability is our ability to track down the product right from the farm till it reaches the consumer so for example we have more than uh, 40 50 farms which gives us their material so whenever a customer says this particular 100 gram panet i have a problem then i can go back to the farm level and say what chemicals they have sprayed when is the plant is pruned what chemicals they sprayed on what day when the fruit is harvested when i have received the fruit how long it is in my storage when did i produce it when did i ship it to whom i shipped it so entire channel date wise and time wise i should be able to tell the consumer so this is the traceability particularly for example you have a problem with a pesticide a customer or some uh, retail chain finds a problem with your product then you should be able to come back and tell this is a chemical size spread so i should not should not have a problem so first and foremost important thing is the traceability and uh, second is your uh, accreditation or certification this is again the most important thing if i go to a new customer in uk us or anywhere he he never knows what is samagritech but if i tell them that my facility is uh, certified i have so and so certifications and my facility is audited by so and so companies under so and so standard that itself will become an introduction and second thing is the certifications and accreditations will help us to maintain the quality standards so unless you have a defined quality standard uh, defined procedures you will never be able to maintain a standard or maintain that particular level of quality so accreditation and certifications are the most important thing and again third thing is documentation whenever an auditor comes to your place or whenever your buyer who wants to audit your facility when he comes to your place so he will he will ask you what is your documentation what are the documents you are having so documentation is very important so documentation it includes like you should have policies what is your food safety policy what is your policy on metal what is your policy on footwear what is your policy on uh, or, or like ornaments people wear in, in india particularly when you have a lot of women workers working you have a particular problem with all this jewelry they wear bangles nose nose rings ear studs necklaces and then something they wear on the uh, toes and everything toe rings everything everything is a big problem again you should have a policy on what type of jewelry is allowed inside similarly you should have health and safety policy likewise you have different policies similarly training content what are the training you want to give to people how many people received the training how frequently you train them what is your training plan how do you decide who requires what training so again training content and training planning training policies and again your forms and records what whatever you are doing everything has to be recorded similarly your process maps how do i process for example pomegranates i harvest in the farm i bring it to the cold storage i grade them put it in the cold storage take them out you wash it and then you cut it you take out the seed you grade it and then you pack them put them in the cold store and then dispatch it. this is the process flow so likewise you should have process map for all the products similarly checklist 
So what do you check? For example, if I am receiving food from the farm, what do I check in? Similarly, somebody is a, a QC guy, look at the final product. What are the things you should check into that? Similarly, morning before starting production, people should go in and verify whether the place is ready for production. Again, there is a checklist. So, documentation and your uh, accreditation or certification goes hand, hand in hand. And the uh, most important thing is consistent quality. You may have a wonderful uh, traceability system, you have wonderful documentation, you have a, a list of certificates you know, which are there on the wall, everything is fine. But unless and until you can give a consistent quality, you will not be able to retain your business. Because this is an agricultural product, quality always varies, it is not machine made. For example, food in the months of say December, November, November, December, January, February, the color of the aerial, color of the seed is dark, dark red. Same thing if I harvest in June, it is light in color. So you should inform the customer. This is the issue. Next month, my quality will be this. So consistent quality is very important and safe and wholesome and uh, consistent food product is equal to commitment. If you want to give this, if you want to give a safe, wholesome and consistent food product, you need a commitment, you need awareness, teamwork. For example, if you take our uh, process, you have more than, in between three facilities, I have got more than 350 women workers working. So unless they understand the quality, unless they understand the importance of hygiene, it is very difficult to give them a quality product. Similarly, how do I communicate? How do I communicate with my workers? How do I communicate with my staff? How do I communicate with my buyers? How do I communicate with my farmers? So all these things and plus quality control. So if you have all these five things, then you can give a consistently good, good quality product. So most of the people think quality is cost. Quality is not cost. It pays you back. It pays you back many times. For example, if you have a quality control controller, you have to pay him some salary. So the production guy who is there can take care of quality. That's what most of the people think. But it will never happen. The quality control, quality assurance should be an independent function in any of the factory, in any of the facility, in any of the industry. You, you cannot link quality control and quality assurance with production. Because both are always at a loggerhead. Production guy wants to produce anything at any cost. Quality people want quality product. So basically their objectives are different. So quality has to be an independent function. So certifications, like I told you, we have different certifications, both for farm and uh, factory. So farm level, we have a global gap. And then uh, Tesco's nurture choice. Field to fork is a requirement for uh, Marks and Spencer's. Grasp is again a social standard. It looks at grasp and meta. Both are uh, social standards where they look at your uh, how many, how much wage you are paying to your uh, farm worker. Is the farm working conditions are safe? Do they have washrooms, toilets? Do they have a place to eat? Is it safe for them to work? So all those things are considered. And the organic, we have two organically uh, certified farms. And the spring is one more certification where. Uh, it looks at your water footprint. How much water you are using to produce one ton of, uh, <coughs> or one kilo of the product, like your carbon footprint. They calculate the water footprint and they see how you are using your water on the farm. How efficiently you are using the water on the farm. They look at that. And then when it comes to factory, we have all these requirements. These some are legal requirements. Without them, you cannot export. For example, one is a BRC, is a British Retail Consortium. This is a universally recognized standard. 
where uh, third party auditors will come to your place and audit. This is done once in a year and uh, their audits are unannounced. They will not tell you when they are coming. They will tell you just, for example, today they have planned the audit. Today morning only you will know that they are coming. So this, if, if you opt for that, then you will get a better rating. Again, same field to fork. Again, ISO 22000, Smeta, kosher is a requirement for uh, juice, like our halal certification. And then all your pack process has to be certified by APADA, audited and certified. And then when you want to export to European Union, or you want to export to Australia, or you want to export to USA, these are the PQ audits done by the APADA and Plant Quarantine Department of India. And then you should have your FSS licenses and then Export Inspection Agency or Export Inspection Council. Again, you got your Cosmos. Cosmos is for your pomegranate seed oil for uh, cosmetic purposes. And then uh, Good Manufacturing Practices and Organic Certification. These are the various stand certifications we have. So put together between all our three working facilities, you got more than 4550 certificates. And then product range. Present product range is we have fresh aerials, uh, IQF aerials, IQF is individually quick frozen, like your uh, green peas. IQF aerials, dried aerials, and then pomegranate pulp, chocolate coated aerials. This is dried aerials coated with chocolate, and then pomegranate seed oil, and then pomegranate wine. Wine, we are going to launch it. Uh, this January, we got all the licenses, everything is ready, product is ready, bottling is done. So this January, we are going to launch the pomegranate wine in Nashik. And uh, ours is the first company which is exclusively doing pomegranate wine. And under uh, progress is your peel extract. Pomegranate peel is the waste material you get. Generally, you convert it into uh, manure and give it to the farmers. But there are a lot of bioactive compounds in peel. So this we are, we are working with a few oh, extraction companies uh, to commercialize the peel extracts. And pomegranate juice also, oh, we are working with one of our uh, uh, Switzerland importers. So we are st still looking at how to economically transport it. So discussions are going on. Uh, so this is uh, about Sam Agritech. And the video link, I think I'll share it uh, uh, in the uh, this one. So if you have any doubts, you can ask me. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And thank you for giving us a valuable time to us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. So we are moving towards not uh, last but not the least, which is on bank uh, banking and financial assistance detailed project report. Preparation to the micro enterprises. Now, I would like to invite Dr. T. Sainth, Manager Technical in State Bank of India, Administrative Office, Switchy. I would like quickly introduce her to you. He has more than 12 years of experience as a commercial banking professional and specializes in rural banking and schematic loan uh, products and rural microcredits. He conducted more than 193 seminars, workshop training for the farmers and for the bank officers dealing in agri financing for bringing the awareness about the new technology and published various journals and articles related to the dairy technology and, tech and science. He was awarded as a young scientist by the Department of Science, Technology at Anna University, Chennai. I welcome you, sir, and thank you for accepting our invitation. The session is over to sir. Thank you so much. I thank Mr. Kanjavu for conducting this type of webinar because I have the confidence that at least few of the participants will get the benefit from this webinar. Okay, okay. Suppose if you want to start any project or business, ultimately you need some money. Any benefits from own money or you need well the bank or any financial institutions, you need to get the money from any financial institutions. Suppose if, it, if you are starting the project from your own money, there is no need to worry about the projects, a detailed project report. Suppose if you are going to start the project with the help of any financial institutions or from the bank, you need to propose. In this situation, you need to do some project report. Project report should be because 
that banker doesn't know about the project what we are doing. Do in future. That's why you need to prepare a Pakka project report for understanding of the bankers. Within that, why we need to prepare That's the importance of that. EPR. Okay, suppose EPR we reflect the entire project, the entire plan of business. Okay, in the project report, no mentions. That's EPR. That detailed project report will show your profit. And also, it will reflect your operational cost and project cost. And it may give some idea of the bankers what you are going to do. Okay, based on the DPR elements to the bankers to understand about your projects. But in preparing the DPR, some of the points should be understood. Suppose, first one, name of the project. What is the name? Suppose, you want to the project in the processing and value addition of Omer Khan FDX. That by the name of the project. Yes. Yes. That is the title of the project. And what is the object of the project? Suppose, if you have this project, what is the outcome of the project? What is the impact? In that locality. Okay, it should be mentioned in a project report. Okay, then details of the promoters, whether it is a proprietorship or partnership or if it is a company or LLB. Okay, then what is the position of the company or what is the position of the nature of the business? Okay, the details. All the uh, all the promoters' details for uh, for example, can we see? Okay, father, bank card, and account number. If you have any account number of the bank, they all mention your account number. Okay, suppose if any of the partners having the experience, either they are having the own experience or they acquire the experience from any training centers. Okay, should be mentioned in the EPR. Or already suppose if you are having experience in the line of activity how long you are having the activities whether you are having any existing unit whether you are going for the expansion like that how to mention in the dpr okay these are the details of your promoters and activities okay then the land details the land details should be mentioned whether it is a own land okay or it's a registered lease Lease land should be mentioned. Whether it is a one one of the land means whether it's an individual or in the name of the company. Okay, the details should be provided in that project report. Whether, sorry, whether it is a own land means whether you are having any approval. Okay, so for like that, uh, suppose if you are having that Punjabi approval, approval, that approval details should be mentioned in the details. Then, what is the plant capacity? Capacity of the building or capacity of the housing unit should be mentioned, and the production details and plant and machinery details also. What are the machineries? What are the processing centers? Because the processing hall, storage hall, labor, office room, it should be mentioned. What are the dimensions? What is the construction cost? Okay, this, this one of the details you have to mention in your DPR. The proposed site should be easily accessible to the nearest marketing unit, marketing area. Okay. The primary land should be mortgaged to the bank. Should be mortgaged to the bank. Suppose if you are arranging the loan, if any scheme, okay, you need not extend any collateral security to the bank. You have to Extend only the primary property. Primary property should be mortgaged to the bank. And layout. Layout should be prepared with the help of the architect. Okay. The entire housing or an office home under the What are the structures you need? That structure should be the layout of the bank. It should be prepared with the help of architect or any engineers. Okay. The layout should be shown. 
processing area, receiving area, loading and unloading areas, and storage areas, labor and office workers. And there is any amenities involved in that project should be mentioned. And food safety measures. Food safety measures means some of the projects required some government officials' license or approvals. It should be mentioned whether it is a needle, which department you need to get the approvals. The needle is still on the project. Suppose for the FCA or health department or moiling department or fire safety department, like that, some government department, you need to get some approval from the government department. Apart from that, the implementation period, implementation schedule, how long it will take for the production of your project? From day one, suppose today you are getting your improvement sanctioned. Okay, after getting the documentations and uh, other formalities, the loan will be fixed on this one the end. Okay, how long it will take for the implementation of your project, whether it is a six month or one year? After the completion of the implementation schedule only, the payment period will start. The contract only in the back of the entered over a payment period. Then the forward and backward linkages. Forward linkages means the facility is required to start your business. Okay, the facility is required to start your business. Forward and backward linkages. So, for example, land, labor, and power, and home material, and water sources that we all bring in the project report. Well, land details already were, I mentioned that labor, sufficient labor, till labor plus and daily wages and that are the labor details you have mentioned. How many labor is required? How you are brought to the to your project for your business and power, whether the power is easily available or not. What is the formality you are getting for the power equipment and how materials? Suppose for homogranate processing in it. Okay, whether in that area, where you are going to install your business, in that area, whether the homogranate is easily available or not, like the engineer or not, where you are going, where you are going to bring the raw materials, the details you have to mention. And for whether, any processing in it, the water is the main important sources, whether the water availability is there or not. Okay, if availability is that means whether it is a borewell or one, that are a, okay, what type of source is available? Then backward linkages, backward linkages means for marketing, how you are doing your uh, product, how you are marketing your product, okay, whether you have any type of arrangement with any companies or based on your own marketing, that it is out that in the project report. Then the success to be more. Next slide. Next one. Yes. Then that. No, no. Previous. Yes. Previous. Previous one. Previous. Previous. Yes, yes. Most important. Suppose you have a sorting project. Next one. Employment generations. Okay, suppose the project is more than one person has to post. How the project will have the impact on the local areas? Whether how many persons have been created by that? Okay, that is the mention. Then infrastructure and connectivity of the plant. Whether the plant is easily connected to the nearest railway stations or nearest bus stand or nearest uh, airport. Like that. The connectivity of the plant should be measured. How many kilometers is available from the plant to the airport or uh, railway stations at the bus stand? Because the marketing purpose. And some other process will come and connect to the plant easily. It should be connected easily. And what is the best of processing or technology you are using for the processing of your raw materials? Okay, what kind of method? What kind of processing involved in that unit? Then SWOT analysis, what is the nothing but what is the strength of your unit? Whether you are having a more land, experience, raw material availability, labor, power, water, like this is a strength. Your, okay, then what is the weakness? Suppose the marketing is away from your unit, 500 kilometers, 200 or the export unit, like that. What is the weakness? Is based on your business, not common business. 
okay not the common uh, area of the business it should be the spot analysis based on your own business okay then what is opportunities suppose now you are calculation of one variable what is the opportunities are available in future availability based on your business then what is the threat suppose of in the processing activities any threats are available or not like that you have mentioned then monitoring and evaluation after the installation after the erection of your business or your projects how you are going to monitor or how you are how you are going to evaluate your business on month on month or year on year the details are all mentioned yes please excellent yes uh any projects the outcome of the project is your market okay for the market area market pd you should give the broader details okay which group you are going to target there is a local people or a international or a away the people away from that your area okay which group you are going to target is it some boys or children like that there are so many products available it is only based on that suppose woman can get it only for the disease the people or hospital people okay or the people who those who are traveling okay not the doctor that's most important this group of people should be and the availability these are the effect from this season the crop is available okay that details whether throughout the year you can get the product or only that particular period of the product particular period of the season you can get the product like that you have mentioned it better then nearby the connectivity of the product then state and central government policy suppose if you want to market your product that policy should be accommodated or otherwise it will be difficult to market your product any value additions after installation of your project or the business there is any value addition be that means you have to mention okay then okay These are all the technical aspects. Okay, that financial viability. Any project you can take, they have one is the technical viability. Second one is the financial viability. Financial viability is slightly but your cost, project cost. The blank cost is the one that it will not be included in the project. You can include, but it should be funded by the owner or promoter. Then that. Maybe the construction of shed, construction of the shed, or the erection of shed. Then, as opposed to the construction, you have to get the quotations and estimates of your equipment and machineries. Actually, the prices will be equal from construction to equipment and anything, even the insurance cost, even the pre-operating cost. Everything we can add in that. Okay, this is what will be done. Project. You can add the entire project cost. A to Z. There is nothing is omission. Okay, you can add the equipment. Even that. Suppose if you are want to spend some amount for the project preparation. Okay, that cost also you can include in the project report. Okay. Suppose this our total project cost is five crore. Within five crore, then moreover, okay, the promoter should bring some margin up. It depends upon the project. Suppose if the scheme activity. It makes you minimum ten percent, maximum of twenty five percent margin should be brought from the borrower. Okay, and thirty days prior you are bringing your margin, whether you are bringing into cash in the bank, or actually the margin will be reduced at the time of disbursement only. Okay, you want to show your margin. I can draw this amount from this business or from this business like that. You have to show then. Suppose any subsidy is eligible from the government department, they have to mention it. Which department can get that? Suppose the government and processing plant is eligible for subsidy of the food for the food processing industry means they have to mention how much percentage of your total project cost. Whether it is a twenty five percentage or thirty percentage. Suppose for S C S T people will get thirty percentage. Okay, this one that they have to mention how much subsidy capital subsidy is available. Then apart from that subsidy. Some of the projects are eligible for interest subsidy also. Suppose bank is charging nine percent of interest, then government will give ten percent or two percent of interest subsidy. Okay, 
Okay, that data is out from into that DPI. Yes, sir. Next one. Yes. Apart from the project cost, what is the rate of interest? As the RB numbers only back when you saw the rate of interest. Uh, the interest doesn't so much vary from bank to bank, bank to bank. Okay, mostly the points I posted are point two five percent only, not more than that. Then percentage of term loan. Okay, term loan. So the investment activities. Okay, investment. So for the construction and for the purchase of machineries. Okay, these are the term loan. And cost of production and profitability. What is the cost? How much cost do you take for that? One kg of productions. Okay, that you have to own. Then what is the expenses? That is the cost of the productions and expenses. Then how much you can get the profit? The details are brought. Then sales. How much sales will take? Can happen within a year. Based on that, you have to project it for the another six years or seven years, ten years. The project should be not maximum of ten years. You should. Brought into your project and proposed proposed cash flow statement. Okay, what is the income? What is the outcome? Then what is the interest? Okay, this one that the cash flow statement should be brought in detail. Okay, next one. Then proposed profit and loss statement. What is the profit? What is the loss? Well, at what stage you can earn the profit? That is your own profit. Then repayment. Repayment of term loan. So if you are availing the term loan, what is the repayment period? Suppose if you are adding the gestation period or implementation period of one year means after one year, after completion of one year, then repayment will start. Okay, how long it will take? Another five years, or seven years, or ten years? It depends upon your profit. Cash flow statement. It may vary from post to project to project. And break even analysis. At which point you can get the profit? Depreciations. Okay, for the machineries and buildings, what is the depreciations? Okay, that details you have to plot. Then asset and liabilities. What is the asset and liabilities of your motors? Whether the individuals or the companies, or even the employees also have to submit one set of liability statement. This one is only banks will design the loan amount, your eligible amount. Yes. Yes, please. Next one. Yes. Now, you are coming to know that how to prepare a project report. Okay, these are all the points needed. You should know before you go to starting up your business. Now, you have prepared your detailed project report. What are the points you need? Of these are all the points should be covered. These are all the points should be there in your project report. Apart from that. Okay, you should know something. Before preparing of your project report, you should approach the bankers to know your civil score. Because that civil score is most important thing. Because the bank bankers will check the civil score only. The civil status based on your activities, for agri or SME or MSME activity. Based on that, they will have some minimum score. Suppose six fifty, seven fifty, like that. That civil scores most important thing, and more so that the civil status it should not be written written on the board. Any waiver in your civil status, any people the board or the board able to get the any loan amount from any financial bank institute. Okay, you can't get. Suppose that civil report will reflect any people in your. Suppose you are only the any loan from the consumer loan, any bridge or washing machine from any financial institution, so you should be part of proper payment should be happen. There is any default, the bankers will have definitely they will reject the proposals. So one thing is most important thing on the head kept in your mind the civil score. Okay, then okay after obtaining the civil score, the bankers will tell the loan giver proposals. Okay, they will accept your proposals either you can apply through online or through offline. Online through the proper site, you can go and apply projects, DPR, and, uh, and uh, 
and close your projects report. Or in offline means you can directly go to the branch manager and submit your projects. After submission of your project, they will go through that and they will come for your research inspection. Okay, where your activity happen. That means the banker will come, the filter will come and inspect the page, whether the raw material is available, what is available, power is available. They will analyze this the field inspection at the time of field inspections. Okay. This one of your field inspection, the banks, the bank will sanction your loan about either in, in terms of term loan or CBC. If this one you bank will sanction that. Actually, in the process, you need some term loan. Definitely, you need some term loan for erection. Okay. Direction of building and installation of machineries. The term load is must. Apart from the term load, you need some CC. One thing that the term load is needed based on your cycle. Suppose today you are getting the raw material. Within 10 days or within 15 days, the raw material should be uh, should be complete. Uh, Finish rules. Okay, it will come. 15 days means that 15 days. Or what is the for example, raw material cost, labor, the manager, uh, what are the uh, water cost, or uh, power cost, like that. What are the cost involved for processing of the conversion of the raw materials? From raw material to fishing books. Okay, this, what are the amount of maker? That is something of that. This one that is 15 days or 10 days. Okay, this one that limit, they will sanction their working of limit also. Okay, after completion of the processing and inspections, they will get some documentation and closing charges, then the loan will be released from the bank side. Right? These are all the type of financial assistance, term loan, working capital, and demand loan, letter of credit, and bank guarantee. Based on any of one gets and two gets, you can get the loan from the bank. Okay, how you can get the loan, how you can get the DCR, and what are the banking schemes are available. These are the schemes commonly available in all the banks. Okay. Agri infrastructure. Already I, I mentioned that agri infrastructure fund. This is the most important scheme is available for housing in the value addition units. This scheme is available in all the banks. All scheduled banks. This uh, sponsored by the government of India only. Okay. Housing unit will get only. Okay, based on your activity you can get the working capital. Actually, that all the banks and financial institutions, based on your activity, they will definitely have some schemes. Okay. For example, for State Bank and India, we are having some agri enterprise loan and KSR, Kisan Samrithi loan. Okay, this schemes are available. Under this scheme, you can get the loan maximum of 50 and 100 crores. Under agri enterprise loan, you can get the loan. 100 crore, KS are 50 crore. Okay, this is specially available schemes at State Bank of India, up to 5 crore under, uh, under agree enterprise loan, without security ever available, and up to 5 crore. Okay, then most of the schemes are without, now normally available without security, but the primary security are marked to the bank. Then for the farmer producer company, also we are having some schemes. Okay, farmers produce a company, especially you have designed. Okay, in that we have some eligible criteria. If you are fulfilling that eligible criteria, you can avail the loan under the farmer producer company also. The farmer producer company you can avail the loan under AFC, agri enterprise loan, or under AAF also. Okay, there is no restriction on it. And as usual, you can know about the PM FM I am some Udra stand up India. These are the common common loans available for any bank. Okay, then this is in elaboration with the AFs. Under AFs, up to two crore is available without any collateral securities. And moreover, the government is giving two percent of interest subvention up to for five years. Okay, then closing unit you need to get the definitely you need to get the sanction of working capital. Then mudra up to ten lakhs. The small units no? up to 10 lakhs for agri aligned units, you can get the loan for under Mudra unit. Up to 10 lakhs without any for securities. Okay, all aligned.
ini ada di second tower. Tapi kan saya closing akhir tahun itu second tower. Atau dengan itu tower bakal ada security. Yes. Yes. Suppose if you want any good old good old good old means you can get the loan under this product. Government is giving some subsidies also for twenty percent is for common people, general people, and thirty percent of SCST movements. Borrower can get the subsidy under this activity. Yes. Next one. I already told Farmers Producer Company and BMFMB and Mutra Stand Up India. Stand Up India also is one of the most important schemes are available with over the bank of us up to two months the new business activities up to two months. Okay. Without any collateral securities. Then farmers uh, produce marketing law. Suppose they have started a business or project to closing the monogram of the same name. Who doesn't have a free market? Your product, your product, product is ready now for market. That time, who doesn't have any value for that product? Now you are going to store the product. Okay, for a bit of your time needs. Then you will have the rate. That way, we will be able to sell your product. Till the period, you can loan, loan is marketing to the various receptor. Again, the value of that product. Suppose you are adding the one crore value of the product means you can get the loan again the product value of sixty percent. This is a produce marketing loan, a various receptor. You can store under your own number in the bank or SBI to extend the loans for own loans. You can store your product under government loans. State uh, state warehouse or central warehouse. Okay, uh, everything will happen online only. They will produce the receipt for the bankers. Bankers will extend the loan based on your receipt, your product value. Sixty percent of maximum sixty percent of your value is. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I think a uh, lot of confusions and uh, we clear all the things. And thank you for supporting us and coordinating with us in this uh, webinar. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, participants. I hope uh, you clear all the doubts regarding the pomegranate and the bank details and everything. Okay, participants. I would like to conclude and remarks in voto thanks. Thank you all the speakers and participants for the joining the sessions. I hope this webinar you get the valuable knowledge and ideas for your startup and business. On the behalf of Niftam Thanjavur and PMFME team, I formally announce the webinar is over. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you.